Welcome to your sixth video on Ancient Rome. And we're still in this prelude series of videos we've been working on. So we, of course, finished off the introduction, and we spent the last four videos going over the Roman legion. And in the next two videos, we're going to go over the Roman classes and social units, as those played an instrumental role in the evolution of Rome. Now, it's believed Rome at its height was one of the largest urban centers of its time. It reached a population of about one million people, if you can imagine that. And just to give you an idea, London didn't reach that size until the early 19th century. So with a city of that size, there was bound to be conflicts between the various classes. And so that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. Now, there are four distinct classes that we can identify in ancient Rome. At the bottom, as always, were the slaves. Above them were the freedmen. And then there was an upper class that consisted of the patricians and the plebeians. So as you can see, the patricians and the plebeians were the citizens. And so when we talk about the early class struggles in Rome, we're really talking about a struggle between the citizens and the upper class. And of course, there was a division even in the upper class. The patricians were on the high end and the plebeians were on the low end. Now, if you were not a citizen, you weren't even in the discussion. So the freedmen and the slaves had absolutely no chance for participation in the Roman government. So again, that's an important distinction. When we talk about the class struggles, we're really talking about a struggle between the upper class divisions. Okay, so let's break down what the patricians and the plebeians were all about in the Roman class system. Now, the patricians could trace their ancestry to the original three tribes of Rome. That is, the three tribes that founded Rome. And so this is during the time of the Roman kingdom. And so the first hundred senators were members of the patrician class. Eventually, this would grow to about 300 senators, 100 from each original tribe. So the original senate during the time of the Roman kingdom consisted of patricians only. Now, the patricians and the plebeians united in their efforts to drive out the king of Rome. But when that struggle finally ended, all the spoils of the victory fell to the patricians. And so this was not a republic yet in the way we like to think of a republic. It was dominated by the patricians only. And so the patricians will dominate almost the entire Roman government, including the Senate, the consulships, as well as the key religious office, the Pontifex Maximus. And so this is not yet a republic in the way we think of a republic. It will take several centuries for it to evolve, and that will entail the plebeians gaining more and more rights as time goes by. And that's what we'll also take a look at in this video. So again, just think of the early Roman Republic as more of an aristocratic republic that's dominated by the patricians only. Now, the plebeians consisted of everyone outside of those original three tribes I just talked about that founded Rome. So they could not trace their roots to the three original tribes. And remember, what I mean by everyone is all the other Roman citizens. And so plebeian stands for common people. And so they outnumbered the patricians and constituted a bulk of the Roman population. So the main issues were, as we talked about, the patrician domination of all the political offices. And so, of course, the patricians had a monopoly on the Roman government. And of course, because of this, the patricians became extremely wealthy. And so distribution of wealth is the other major issue. Now, eventually, as the plebeians gain political clout, the wealth will be distributed more evenly. And the final issue was debt and land. And many of the plebeians, over the course of several centuries, owed a lot of debts to the patricians. And so that will become a huge issue. And of course, as always, the distribution of land was a major issue. And again, with the domination of the government, the patricians were able to distribute the lands amongst themselves. And so we will also see that change in the coming centuries. Okay, so let's move along to the timeline now of events that shaped the classes of Rome. And it was called the Conflict of the Orders. Now, I don't know why they decided to call it that. You'd think they could have come up with a more meaningful name. But that's what it's called, the Conflict of the Orders. And the first major event occurred in 494 BC, when Rome needed to go to war against several of the surrounding tribes. But the plebeians basically said, uh-uh, we're not going to war here until you patricians give us some rights. Otherwise, you guys can go fight the war yourselves. Well, the patricians didn't have the numbers to do that, and so they came to what must have been a very, very difficult decision here. And basically, the patricians decided to go ahead and create the office of the tribune. And this was a major event because a tribune would only represent the plebeians in the Roman government. Now, 10 tribunes would be elected each year 
And this is a key point. They were elected only by the plebeians. So patricians could not participate in the vote. The other point here is they had the power of veto. And this was absolutely critical. They could veto any act by the consuls that they deemed necessary. So as the consuls were controlled by the patricians, this was a huge, huge check on the consulship. The other thing they did was they made sure that the tribune could not be interfered with during the course of his term, and to do so was punishable by death. So this was a very real attempt to quell the crisis. And you have to admire the Romans in the early Republic. There could have been a civil war here, but the ruling patricians decided to do what was best for Rome. And certainly a civil war was in nobody's best interest. Now the next big event occurred in 449 BC, and this involved the 12 tablets. And what they did was they essentially published the laws. Now we might take that for granted today, but then that was a huge deal because the laws were unwritten. And so they were open to interpretation by the ruling patricians. Now that the laws were published, anybody who could read could go interpret the laws for themselves. They didn't have to go to the patricians. So that was another check on the power. And so they were no longer secret. And so that was another huge event in terms of the plebeians gaining more political power. And what many of those written laws did was they granted rights to all citizens within Rome. Again, citizens, not slaves or freedmen. But even after this, the class struggle continued as the plebeians fought to access more offices and have more abilities to make laws. And so the next major set of laws occurred in 367 BC. These were very significant reforms. And these were the so-called Licinian laws. And what this did for the first time was allow plebeians to run for the all-powerful position of consul. Now, patricians fought very hard against that clause. But in the end, the plebeians succeeded and gained access to one of the most powerful positions within Rome. And so from this point on, there would always be one patrician consul and one plebeian consul. The Licinian laws also limited the amount of debt that plebeians owed, and for the first time, public land would be available to all the classes not just patricians. So no one could hold more than 300 acres and have a monopoly on all the land. And so this would prevent anyone from becoming a robber baron in the modern sense. And so a domino effect sort of happened now. 30 years later, the plebeians gained access to the office of censor, another very powerful position within the Roman government. But the watershed event occurred in 287 BC, and this involved the creation of the People's Assembly. And this finally gave the right to the plebeians to pass their own laws. And more importantly, the laws were binding on both patricians and plebeians. And so at last, the plebeians had reached something close to political parity with the patricians. Okay, that is going to do it for this video. In the next video, we will discuss the Roman family.